Welcome to BizHack Live, our weekly series on digital marketing tips and tricks. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy and the host of BizHack Live. And today we have a real treat. We're going to be talking about one of the hottest topics in digital marketing, especially for B2B businesses, and that is LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And Brett Spodak of Productive Power is going to be talking about two secret ways to leverage LinkedIn to build rapport and generate new leads. And I have seen uh, this process in person. Uh, I've actually been on the receiving end of it uh, and it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm thrilled that Brett is willing to share some of his secret sauce with our BizHack Live audience. Um, I wanted to acknowledge our season three partners, the South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, the American Marketing Association of South Florida, Creation Station Business, CIC, and the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. Uh, we have uh, an amazing set of speakers coming up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, on Wednesday, the next Wednesday, we're going to be talking about customer acquisition through Google Ads. How do you get new customers through Google? We're going to be then talking about Google Analytics. And then we're wrapping up this season with uh, Fortune 500 marketing techniques that any company can use. Um, I want to um, welcome uh, Brett uh, Spodak, the CEO and founder of Productive Power, uh, also a friend and mentor. I, I've really admired the way you've grown your business, um, the business that you're running, the integrity you bring, um, and frankly, the impacts that you've gotten for me uh, as one of your clients. And uh, I'm really happy to have you here and to share you with our community um, I also know that you're a serial entrepreneur and someone who's uh, started several businesses, um, and uh, I know this one's going to be a huge success as well. Brett, welcome and thank you. Well, thank you, Dan. You're definitely an inspiration to us who are all trying to figure out this crazy marketing world we live in. And so I appreciate your mentorship as well and, and guidance and, and certainly enjoyed participating in your program, as I know Shauna did as well. Um, so I introduced myself earlier. I'm the CEO of Productive Power. I also want to introduce Shauna Spiller, who's our program coordinator um, here at Productive Power. And she is the one who helps me implement the two secrets you're about to learn today. Um, and she also helps onboard folks here at Productive Power for our uh, productivity coaching program. So with that, I'm excited to share. This is actually the first time you're the first audience to see this in a webinar format. So we've been hard at work creating a PowerPoint that we think is engaging and certainly um, efficient, efficiently outlines the, the processes that we have in place here at Productive Power. So as Dan mentioned, uh, the processes I'm about to teach you are essentially what we've used here at Productive Power uh, to generate over a million dollars in revenue in our business. And so uh, we really don't um, spend a lot of money on marketing. We generally generate a lot of our marketing, a lot of our prospects and, and sales in the present in the in the process that I'm going to share with you today. And so, with that, I am going to share with you what we do. So, let's start out with a little background about LinkedIn. Uh, as you may know or may not know, LinkedIn has over 171 million active users. So approximately 350 million people in the United States, just about half of them are using LinkedIn. Um, Brett, over, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if you're sharing your screen already, but we are uh, not seeing the presentation. Are you not seeing it? Let's see it. Let's go to it. Perfect. Thank you. We have it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here we go. So as I mentioned, LinkedIn has over 171 million active users in the United States, representing about half of the population of the United States. Uh, there are over 85 million users with a college degree and um, over 20 million are decision makers in their company with 3 million C-level executives. So if you, as Dan mentioned, if you are in B2B and you're trying to reach decision makers, you're crazy not to leverage LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a a gold mine of data that you can access. And if you know how to do it effectively, then you can use it 
tremendously to your advantage. Uh, for those of you that are using LinkedIn, I strongly suggest uh, that you use Sales Navigator. So Sales Navigator is an upgrade. It's a premium add-on uh, and it does cost $80 a month, but it allows you to do two very important things for what I'm gonna demonstrate today. Uh, number one, it allows you to filter by additional um, specifications and criteria, such as geography, seniority level, company size, and longevity with the company, which are gonna be essential to what I show you today. Uh, it also allows you to create lists lists and pull people in for certain um, with certain criteria. And so again, these are two essential uh, pieces of functionality that will allow us to do what, what I'm gonna show you today. All right, so let's start with secret number one, a very clever bonding technique, very clever bonding technique. So first I wanna talk about bonding, right? Which is an essential part of the sales process. And we all do bonding uh, with every call. I mean, think about it. You get on a call with someone, you don't just go right into, hey, tell me what you do. Um, tell me what you do. You try to generate some rapport. You try to generate some bonding with the person. And what do most people go to? What do most people go to? Let me see it in the chat. What do most people go to when they try to bond with someone, try to find a commonality? Let me see someone in the chat. Give it a shot. Come on, folks. What's the number one thing that people go to? Any guessers out there? Schools? Weather. Thank you, Alex. Weather. How's the weather, right? It doesn't matter if you have the same weather, although that's always nice, but we all experience weather, and that's a common bond that everybody goes after. So you can certainly do that, but my suggestion is that you go one step further and actually find a bond which is going to benefit you in terms of selling this particular person. And so um, you know, when it comes to bonding, the other thing that we always look for is people we, we know in common, people we know in common. So think about it. You meet with someone, you find out they're in a certain industry, you start name dropping people that you know in that industry. Ideally, you name drop people who you've worked with, who are clients uh, that you're comfortable sharing. And so uh, what I'm going to show you today is a foolproof way of of not only identifying people that they probably know, but also identifying people that are actually clients of yours as well, okay? So the, the power of LinkedIn and in, in, in our ability to do this is number one, that you're able to see who that prospect knows. So think about what LinkedIn really provides. You know, you, you constantly are just connecting with people, accepting connections, but what LinkedIn is really doing for those that are trying to prospect is it lets you know who they know. And that's so powerful because in the past, it's not like we could ever steal someone's Rolodex and find out everyone they know or, or steal their phone and look through their contacts. But LinkedIn serves that information up to you on a silver platter. So you can go into LinkedIn and see virtually uh, every person that that person knows, certainly any person that they've connected to on LinkedIn. And the second thing you can do is filter that list by people who you've worked with, okay? So you can filter that list by people you work with. So let me demonstrate how this is all gonna work for you. Oh, and before we do, I did wanna invite all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn. So if you wanna take this moment right now to look on LinkedIn as I'm talking and look up Brett Spodak and go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and Shauna will actually log into my account and accept those connection requests. All right, so how does it work? Well, here's someone we all know in common, Mr. Dan Gretsch on LinkedIn. And as you can see, um, Dan has over 500 connections and he and I share 105 connections. So let's say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm about to meet with Dan for the first time. I'm about to meet with Dan for the first time. And I go in and I see that he has 500 connections. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is connect with him before I meet. A lot of people say, should I connect with someone before the meeting, after the meeting? 100% connect with that person before the meeting. Okay, so you schedule a meeting on the calendar, your next step should be to schedule, to connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, because what this allows you to do, if they've allowed this permission, 
is to view their first degree connections, first degree connections. So you can go ahead and click on that 500 plus connections and see everyone that Dan knows. Now, in this case, out of the 500 people that Dan knows, I was able to find one, Melissa Krinsman, who we both know, who is actually a client of Productive Power. So if you notice, here she is on the right-hand side, belonging to one list. I've gone through and used LinkedIn Sales Navigator to tag everyone who's a client of Productive Power. And so I'm now filtering on Dan's connections by, if you notice, participants one and participants two on the left-hand side. I'm filtering his connections by that, uh, which are all of our clients. The reason I have two lists is because I've maxed out the limitations of the first list. The LinkedIn only allows you to have a thousand people on any given list. And we have over a thousand participants who have gone through our training program. And so we created a second list where we're building out, all, adding all the people who have been through our program there. So naturally I get on the phone with Dan and I say, hey, Dan, I was looking through LinkedIn and he thinks I must be combing through his you know, 5,000 connections that Dan probably has on LinkedIn. Um, but really I did a quick filter and I found the one person we have in common. So I was looking through LinkedIn. I noticed that, you know, Melissa Krinsman, how do you know Melissa? And then he shares with me how he knows Melissa. Oh, Melissa's great. She's a client of ours and she's, you know, really happy with the service. And so there we have a bond, but it, it does mutual benefit of making him feel comfortable with me because we know someone in common, but also giving him a built-in testimonial, somebody who he can call, who he trusts. Uh, so if he becomes interested in our service, then he's going to check with Melissa and ask her what she thought about the program. Okay. So very powerful way. Um, I've even taken this. So two quick stories. Um, one time I was at a chamber of commerce events and I sat down at a, a dinner table with a gentleman who uh, worked at a local law firm, Greenberg Chorig. And um, as he was talking to me and then turned to the person, he was talking to me first and I found out he was at Greenberg Chorig. Then he turns over and talks to the person on his right-hand side. I actually took out my phone and, on Le and I went to the LinkedIn Sales Navigator app and I filtered his connections by my two lists and I saw one person that we had in common. And so I noticed that that person used to work at Greenberg Chorig. So when he turned back around, I said, hey, you know, I know uh, one of our clients used to work at Greenberg Chorg. Do you know so-and-so? And he goes, sure, I know him. Oh, he's a good friend of mine, you know? Um, and that, again, gave us a, a quick bonding moment. Um, but I can't tell you how many people that I talk to when I go through this process. Um, you know, let me show you. If I did this for Melissa, if I clicked on her connections, I would get 12, actually 12 clients who she knows who are... Uh, clients of Productive Power. And so Dan is obviously one of them, but so is Howard and Gabriel, um, as well as nine other people. And so another situation that comes up time and, time and time again is that as I list out the 12 people that she knows that have gone through our program, one of them is bound to be a relative. You know, a, a one time I had someone say, oh, is my brother-in-law or a friend from college or their best friend? And so I oftentimes invite them to actually text that person while we're on the call. So think about how powerful that is. I, I name drop, right? I'd say, hey, do you know Dan? Oh my God, Dan and I go way back. You know, text Dan right now and see what he thought about productive power. And sure enough, that person will text that person. And it, in the next couple of minutes, that person responds with a glowing testimonial right in the middle of a sales call. So a very powerful way to leverage LinkedIn to, uh, to, to bond with your, your clients. So um, there was a quick question just about yeah. uh, how to make lists. Um, is that something that you're going to cover? Or? Um, I, can gen I can show on. So basically what you do is you click on the save button in, in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. There's always a save button in the top right hand corner. And then you'll see a drop down of lists and you can then add your own list your customized list, and then select that from the dropdown. This is a, a pre-planned uh, PowerPoint, so I don't have that particular slide up, but that's, that's how you would add people to a list. So if you notice, Dan is, belongs to one list down here, which if I hovered over this in LinkedIn, would show that he's part of participants one or participants two, depending on when we added him to the, our, shared, our, uh, our lists in LinkedIn. Perfect. Okay. 
And there was a question about whether you can tag people and you can no longer tag people in Sales Navigator. That's right. They replaced tags with lists. They had both and then they basically um, uh, decommissioned that functionality and took it away. Okay. Any other questions about how we leverage LinkedIn to, to bond with our prospects? Okay. Fantastic. And by the way, if you connect with me on LinkedIn and we have over 50 connections, chances are there's someone who you know who's been through Productive Power, our training program, and I'm happy to send you the names of those people um, so you can talk to them about their experience with Productive Power and see this, this particular secret in, in effect, okay? So a question from Alice uh, Morrison. So you made a list of people who are your clients? That's right. Um, so basically any person who goes through Productive Power, um, our, our CRM sends out a notification to the entire sales team with a link to that person's um, LinkedIn profile so that everybody, all the salespeople in our organization can click on that link and add that person to their own participants list so that um, we can see them. Now, I want to bring up that if you have a single user LinkedIn account, you all, each person in your company has to create their own uh, lists within Sales Navigator. If you have the team version, you can create a shared list that you all can use. But that's a bit more expensive. And we just found that creating our own private list and our own private account was more cost effective. All right. Any other questions? All right, let's move on to the second secret. How do we generate leads? How do we generate leads? So this is a little bit more of a mouthful. This is a bit of a process and I'm gonna go through it as quickly as I can, um, but, but hold on to your seats because there's a lot going on here and you really have to uh, pay full attention to what I'm saying or you're gonna quickly get lost. So that's all to say, give me your undivided attention. Try not to multitask because you might just miss some key components of this process. So how do we generate leads at Productive Power? This really stemmed from something that happened organically at the company. I was actually traveling to Chicago and I ran into one of the managing partners of a local law firm that, um, that, that I knew was a raving fan of Productive Power. He had said that our program changed his life. Uh, he, had, he had put all of the attorneys in his law firm through our training program and uh, I knew that he would just about do anything for me if, you know, if it meant helping another person he knows go through our program. So I said, uh, I said, I'm going to Chicago. Any chance you know any attorneys in Chicago that you think I might want to meet while I'm there? And he said, absolutely. I know so-and-so that, that's at a law firm uh, in Chicago. Um, you know, happy to have you use my name, he said. And I thought at first, oh, this guy's not going to send an email introducing us. You know, he just says I can use a name, but I, I went with it. I wasn't going to ask him to do anything he wasn't comfortable doing. So um, he gave me the name of the attorney, and I found that attorney's name on LinkedIn. I then found his email. I went to the law firm's uh, webpage, and I found his email, and I just reached out to him. I, as a courtesy, I CC'd the attorney, and I said, um, you know, this particular attorney suggested I reach out, thought you would be interested in what we do. And I told him a little about what we do. And I said, I'm going to be in Chicago. I'd love to set up a meeting if you're interested. And I CC'd him on that email as a courtesy. Well, guess what? He replied to both of us with a glowing testimonial about the impact that Productive Power had had on him and his, his team. And sure enough, in all of two minutes, the guy responded and say, sure, Brett, I'd be happy to meet with you. And I thought to myself, this is amazing. This is amazing. This all happened organically. What if I was able to harness this process and create a whole system around doing this for me and my team? This could be a way that we generate lots of leads from LinkedIn. So, and actually we didn't, we barely even used LinkedIn at that point. But I, I, when I saw the power of LinkedIn, I thought to myself, LinkedIn would be a, it would be really helpful in doing what essentially he and I just did. So first of all, there are a couple caveats to this or a couple requirements for this to work. Um, number one, 
uh, for this to be successful, you need to have raving fans. Okay. So if you ask yourself, is there anybody that I've worked with that I would consider a raving fan who would, who, who is already recommending people use your services? If there, if you can't think of anyone who does that, then you need to reconsider what services you offer to people because you really need to make sure that your particular services wow people or it's going to be very hard to be successful in this world because so many so many businesses are made on positive referrals that you really need to make sure that the people that have used your services are walking around talking about what you do so first step is Make sure that the service you're providing generates raving fans. That's essential to growing any business. Um, the second thing you need to know is that LinkedIn allows you to see who your raving fans know. So in this point where I just asked him if he knows anyone in Chicago, it'd be much more powerful to me to say, you know, and I noticed that you know so-and-so and so-and-so or these particular people that you know, <clears throat> which one of them would you feel comfortable introducing me to? And finally, that you can filter on their connections by specific criteria. This helps you uh, curate a list of people that you would like to meet so that they can tell you who on that list you actually know. So if you didn't catch all the nuances of that, don't worry. We're going to go through step by step how it all works, and it's going to start making sense in terms of what we do. Okay. All right. So this all begins, this process all begins with what we call the feedback call. So if you aren't doing this already, I suggest you implement this in your sales process. And, you know, you start with a prospect, you convert them to a client, and then you want to make sure that that client is satisfied with your service. So build into your process a feedback call, a call specifically designated, designed to give you feedback on their experience. Okay, so in our program, people work with coaches to better their use of technology. And so at the end of that, we ask them to participate in a feedback call because we want to hear how their experience went with our program. So five to 10 questions are best. Um, but, you know, keep in mind that this is serves a couple of purposes. Number one, it provides a check checks and balances. So if they didn't have a good experience, it gives us a way to make sure that we you know, fix whatever problem might have arisen for that person with their experience with our program. It also gives us great feedback on what's working, what's not working. So these questions are designed to give us that feedback. It's also designed to give us statistical data. So we ask things like, how much time did you save per day as a result of going through our program? Okay. Or have you recommended productive power to a friend or colleague? Those kind of questions. So we're very proud to say, based on the data that we collect in these calls, we know that on average, people save 65 minutes per day as a result of going through our training. 65 minutes per day. So that's an incredible statistic to be able to share with people in the prospecting call, in a sales call. Um, and we get that all from our feedback calls, as well as we know that 70% of people that go through our program recommend, pr recommend productive power to a friend or colleague. So two very important data points that I'm able to share in a, in a in a sales deck when I go through people, when I, when I uh, do presentations. But most importantly, most importantly, what it provides is an opportunity to identify people who are raving fans and ask them to help spread the word about what we do. So a key component, there's really three great things we do in this call, get the checks and balances, um, get the statistical data, but then also we identify people who answered Yes, to specific questions that tell us that they're a raving fan. And we can even tell, you can tell on the call when they, you know, one of the first things they say is this changed my life. You know, we get that all the time in Productive Power. People go through our program. They say, my God, this changed our life. I know, Dan, you get the same thing. I've been on your calls where people talk about that. You know who your raving fans are. Sometimes they become teary-eyed because they had such a moving experience. Um, and so you immediately know who those people are. And then you're going to ask them to help you spread the word about what you do. Dan, how are we doing on time, by the way? We're doing great. You just um, keep presenting. I know we started a few minutes late, so we can run a few minutes late if necessary. But you're okay. doing great. Perfect. Cheryl Cattell is a raving fan. Thank you, Cheryl, for that shout out. I appreciate it. You are a raving fan. So 
invitation, invite participate or invite participation to the raving fan program. Okay. So the question is you're on a call. Step two of this process is you're on that feedback call and you recognize that this is somebody who you probably want to invite to be a raving fan and to help you spread the word about what you do. So how do you, this is the hardest part. How do you then ask them to participate in this process in a way that makes them feel really good and not just feel like somebody who's, you know, helping you promote your own service. And so first of all, you have to screen the people and you have to ask your clients a specific question that lets you know whether or not they're even interested in participating. So I ask them straight out, do you consider yourself a raving fan? Now, I know the answer to that. They already told me that they're, um, you know, that they have a life-changing experience that they save two or three hours a day, that they're already telling people about the service. I can tell by the way they're talking about it, they're raving fans. So, you know, there's a, there's a great book called uh, Getting to Yes that says you want to ask questions that people say yes to during your sales call. And so I know the answer to the first question. Do you consider yourself a raving fan? And they say, of course I do. Absolutely. And I said, would you like to hear more about our raving fan program? Well, sure. Who wouldn't like to hear more about a program that clearly has their, t their label in that program? So you're going to get the yes to the first two questions. So they say, tell me more about this program. So I say, well, this is for people who meet, one of, or who meet the following criteria. So you use the word criteria because you're setting up that they're applying to be one of your raving fans to be into this program. So it has to be someone who had a life-changing experience or a game-changing experience with our program. So depending on how impactful we were, I'll use the word life-changing or game-changing because I don't want to promise life-changing. And then they say, well, it wasn't life-changing. It was only, you know, very, very you know, game-changing um, with our program. So that's the first thing you say. Second is someone who's already telling other people about our service. Well, you already know the answer to that question because you asked them in the feedback call, are you recommending productive power to a friend or colleague? And then finally, someone who would like to help us spread the word about our service if it was a really efficient process. Because naturally, anytime you ask someone to be a part of something in their head, they're thinking about how much time is this going to take me, right? Think about anytime someone's invited you to do something, you think to yourself, well, I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to that. So you might be reluctant to participate. So we tell them straight out, we're looking for people that meet these criteria, um, do you meet them? And they go, of course I do. Absolutely. Love to hear more about this raving fan program. Okay. So at this point, they're just curious. They meet the bill. They've said yes five times and they're ready to hear more about the raving fan program. So this is the most difficult part of this process. And believe me, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it a hundred times. And so you only, only by doing it, will you eventually perfect it. Um, but like any sales process, you have to talk about the benefits first. You can't just go into, well, we're going to use LinkedIn and we're going to cultivate, you know, we're going to screen out by list and we're going to identify people you know, and we're going to reach out to them, da, da, da. It would turn people off. So you have to talk about the benefits, why they would want to do it first. Um, and then you can talk about how it works. So the benefits are three things. They can be a resource to others. So they got a great benefit from our program and they can share it with other people and get the rewards of knowing that someone that they care about, someone that they know, um, gives them credit for recommending them to a really good resource. Number two, they will receive something free that they value, right? So the benefits are you're going to get a free session with your coach. So they went through eight sessions with one of our coaches. They had this life-changing experience. Sometimes they even tell me that they're going to buy additional sessions on the, on the feedback call. Well, guess what? You're going to get a free session with one of your our coaches. And they go, oh my God, that's great. I'd love a free session with a coach. And finally, I promise that they'll learn how to leverage LinkedIn to generate leads. So I really only say the third one if they're in business development or sales, because most people wouldn't care about doing that. I mean, sometimes recruiters, people that are trying to find people um, to fill positions would find it beneficial. But for the most part, I save the third one only for see people in sales or um business development. But the first two are enough for most people. Absolutely. They're already telling other people because they want to be a resource and they love a free session with a coach. So now they're hooked, right? They've said yes now seven times. They'd like all these. They are all these. And now they want to know how it works. 
Now, there's a tendency when you get to this part to want to go on and on and explain the whole, the whole process. The problem with that is the more they hear you drag on and on talking about this process I'm about to show you, the less likely they're going to want to do it because it's going to sound like a lot of work. And it's going to sound like you're working too hard to try to convince them to do it. So what's key here is to keep it short. Keep it short, simple, and make it seem like it's not a big deal. Okay? Because it really isn't. So you're going to spend about 10 minutes with me looking through LinkedIn to find people you know who you think would benefit from a service. And then I'm going to reach out to them and use your name to try and get a meeting. That's it. Seems simple. I just said the word 10 minutes. It sounds like it's 10 minutes. It's really not. It's going to be about 30. But the part where we look, we look on LinkedIn is going to only take about 10 minutes. Okay? They've said yes seven times. You say this. Nine times out of 10, the person says, absolutely. Sounds interesting. I can't wait to see what you do. You've already taught me so much. Now you're going to teach me how to leverage LinkedIn. I'm in. When can we schedule? Can we schedule a one-hour outreach call, we call it, um, to do the process I'm about to show you? Any questions so far? All right. Let's keep rolling. So the outreach call, how do we leverage LinkedIn to do the process that I did with the attorney in Chicago? How do we leverage LinkedIn to effectively um, meet their connections? So it, it's a couple steps. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you're connected with a client on LinkedIn. Okay, that's step one. Uh, step two is you have to filter their connections to find process prospects you would like to meet. Step three is you want to work through the list efficiently by asking your client to simply say the names as you move through the list. Uh, you want to add prospects to a lead list in LinkedIn. And finally, you want to export those that list using WIZA or an alternative email scraping platform. So let me walk through what it looks like. So I get, great, great, I get Dan on the phone and he's one of our, and we actually did this with Dan. He's one of our raving fans. And we clicked on his 500 connections on LinkedIn. And you get this page where you can filter the search. Now, it says uh, on the right there, apply, apply your sales preferences. So you can actually save what I'm about to show you. But I go through and identify um, the geography where it says add locations as the United States. And then I go through and... Once you do it and hit apply, you get this screen. So this is better to show you all the things I selected. I select a company headcount of at least 50 employees. I select the seniority level, CXO down to VP. And then I want people who have been with their company at least a year because those people have some influence at their company. You know, a lot of times if they've only been there less than a year, uh, they'll say, well, I just got here. I don't know who's going to listen to what I have to say. But if they've been there at least a year, you know, they've got some influence. So this allows you to filter down a couple thousand connections to maybe a couple hundred. But these are people that I want to meet. Now, this may not be your criteria. So you may have different criteria that you want to meet. But for most of us looking for decent sized businesses with decision makers, these are pretty standard that you want to filter on. So you can save these, apply to your sales preferences and click one button and all of them will populate the filter. So now we're down to, um, let me see how many. 289 that came up when we did it with Dan. 300 is a good number. It doesn't take too long to go through those. And then what you do is you go through and you say, um, Dan, this is exactly what I say. We're about to go through this list. Please identify anyone who you know well enough that you would say this is a good candidate for productive power. And also, you know well enough that if we used your name, they'd probably take a meeting. That's it. So Dan's starting to think of, he's looking down the list, who do I know really well? Who are my friends? Who are people who respect me? Who are people that if you use your name, are going to connect? And I say to Dan, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to page through this list. So we use page down as we go through the LinkedIn names. And we ask Dan simply to say the person's name or say next, because you want to keep it efficient. You want to be able to fly through all these names because it it's going to be about 11 or 12 pages, and you don't want to get take, have it take too long. Um, I can't tell you how many people start giving me the whole story of how they know each person, and, and they went to college, and they give, a, you know, why he think, think he would be interested in it. And you have to politely just say, you know what, well, it's going to take more than 10 minutes. If you, if you <laughs> it's one of those sensitive things you want to be polite about how you ask them to just say the person's name or say next. 
So here we go and check the boxes for the people that meet, uh, that Dan thinks would be good prospects for us. And then we add them to a list. It's that simple. You add them to a list. You create a new list with that person's name. You add these people to a list. At the end of it, you'll have a list of all the people that Dan recommended that you reach out to. You can show Dan the finished list at the end. He can look down. Typically, we get around 30 names when we do this. So think about that. We've now efficiently, in 10 minutes, had them identify 30 people who they know well enough that they would feel comfortable having us reach out to. A lot of people use LinkedIn by first identifying people that they want to meet and then going backwards and seeing who they know, who might know that person. And then they reach out and that person doesn't even know that person well. Think about the time wasted. You know, we're all about efficiency and productive power. And think about how long it would take to go that route to find 30 people versus the route we just went by first having Dan identify people he knows and then, or filtering first the list and then identifying people you know versus the other way around. So now we have a list of, in this case, seven, but you know, we typically have on average 30 people in a list. Really, do, By the way, it really doesn't matter because we've had greater success connecting. Mean, he only identified seven. We'll get six or seven out of seven because he really handpicked those names. And I think he actually picked names more that we just use this. Right, Shauna? This is just what you created for the presentation. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dan... So you don't think poorly on Dan, he actually recommended 30 to 40 people. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes people recommend 200 people, believe it or not, 200 people. But what's interesting is there'll still be a small percentage of people that take the meeting and it'll end up being equivalent to the person who named 30, but got a higher percentage. So the numbers don't really necessarily pan out the number of meetings you get, but at the end of the day, you'll get probably three to five meetings per person out of this process, per, per raving fan out of this process. So once you identify the list, you then need to get the email addresses because LinkedIn, as you know, doesn't give email addresses. All LinkedIn does is uh, give you some basic contact information and sometimes it gives you personal email addresses, but it doesn't give you a very easy way of getting people's email addresses. So we found a couple of products that help you get email addresses. Wiz is the one that we found to be most cost effective and they charge 15% per or 15 cents per valid email. Um, so check out wizard.co uh, if you wanna see what theirs. They have a plugin to LinkedIn, um, but really all we do is, um, actually we do use the plugin, don't we Shauna? Um, no, actually, we don't use the no. plugin. It, it just what actually, there's a, it's a plugin, but it's integrated within LinkedIn. So once you sign up for the service, you'll see, actually, if you go back to the previous slide, uh -huh. um, you'll see export with Wizza. Okay. And so it's integrated with LinkedIn. Okay. So there's full integration. We we'll use a plugin. Okay. Okay. So there's sort of a plugin integration with LinkedIn where you can export them straight from LinkedIn into Wizza. And Wizzle will look up their email addresses. It's got all these uh, logarithms to figure out what people's potential email addresses are. But it doesn't end there because I take that list and then I send it back to Dan and I say, here are the email addresses of the people that you recommended we reach out to. And it gives Dan a chance to look through and see if they look legit. And if they don't, or if I didn't get some through Wizard, Dan will then provide those to us. We just don't want Dan have to look up 30 people and copy their names and emails into. Remember, you want to, you're already asking a lot of your raving fans, you want to minimize the amount of work you ask them to do. So you have Dan kind of um, uh, scan the list and kind of review it for accuracy. And once he says, looks good, you say, great. Thank you very much. Here's that step, review leads and write testimonial. Okay, so you export them to Wizza, and then <laughs> you gotta think ahead here because you're about to reach out to these people. And remember, you're gonna CC Dan. You wanna help Dan again, you wanna save him time. So based on the feedback call, here's a fourth reason you get the feedback call, is you wanna take the verbiage he used to describe the program in that testimonial that you give Dan. Okay, so you're going to give Dan a sample template email 
sample testimonial draft, if you will, of what you think his, his testimony might look like to save him the trouble of writing it and then let him kind of uh, customize it to his desire, okay? So you're gonna ask him to review the list and then you're gonna ask him to review the testimonial to make sure he's comfortable with it. Once he gives you the okay and he's, he says, I'm ready to go, you need to then send out the emails, okay? You need to send out their emails. And so to do a lot of what we're talking about, we use various tools. Um, you know, I'm gonna send a link, uh, let me see real quick. Uh, before we're done here, I'll send a link to the CRM we use um, that I think you'll find very valuable, but I'm also gonna show you the software we use to generate the automatic emails, okay? So uh, all of the people are imported into our um, marketing, uh, our lead generation, our marketing software. And the first email, we copy Dan and we ask him to reply with the testimonial that we supplied and, and he edited it, okay? So outreach is the tool we use to, to send out the emails. This is what outreach looks like. So it allows you to import the leads and set up a campaign. And we do a three email campaign the first email puts that person's name in the subject line. So suggested by Dan Gretsch. Thank you for introducing, uh, hi Dan, thank you for introducing me to so-and-so. So it makes it more like there's an introduction email. Um, hi Bill, Dan Gretsch is a client who had great success with our program such that I reach out to you. Dan thought you might be interested in our services. Here's what we do, very simple. Here's a 30 second video if you wanna watch the video. Would you like to schedule a brief call to discuss if our program would be a good fit for you, okay? So there's a certain percentage that will respond to this right away and say, sure, love to have a meeting, but the, it, it's, it's dramatically increased your conversion rate if Dan responds with that testimonial afterwards, right? So Dan replies all and says, this is a great program. You know, you're gonna get true, tremendous, tremendous value out of it. I, I strongly suggest you take a few minutes to learn more about it. Here's what it did for me. Here's what it did for my team and so forth. If they don't respond to either one of those, you come back with email two, which is just a follow-up email. Remember that we're in the business of helping people um, manage their email and learn to process their email more efficiently. So in this case, we know that they may have problems with their email. So we wanna send another one reminding them to schedule a call with us. We also love Calendly. It's a much more efficient way to give them people's calendar. So I suggest you use Calendly and send a link to your Calendly to try to get them on the calendar. But if they don't respond to email one or two, you want that third email. You guys have seen, I'm sure, various versions of this from email marketers, but it's an email that basically says, should I close your file? So in our case, we haven't heard from you. So either A, you're really busy and my emails are getting lost in your inbox, or B, you're not interested in our service, no problem either way, relieve the, the pressure. And, and we have the luxury of being able to say, if it's option A, there's a wonderful irony in the fact that our program will have, help you address your cluttered inbox. Uh, if it's B, I don't wanna be a pest and we'll gladly close your file. And so the bulk of people respond to the third email. Because as soon as you say, hey, I'm gonna stop emailing you, they take a look at that, they know Dan did the testimonial and they reach out and say, uh, I'd love to schedule a meeting. When can we do so? And you resend on your calendar link. All right, so that was a mouthful. Uh, people oftentimes describe it as drinking from a fire hose, but hopefully you've got the gist of what we do. Um, any questions, any questions that I can address? Feel free to type them in the chat. So what I found really powerful about this is it's, it's really just, um, like a referral program on steroids. It's a way to make it easier. You're using LinkedIn as almost like a mnemonic device where you're saying, um, if I just said to you, hey, Brett, who do you think would benefit from BizHack? You would probably think of one or two people. But if I said, hey, Brett, I look through your LinkedIn's and these are the types of folks that would benefit from BizHack. Yes or no, do you agree? You're gonna get 30. Um, and so it's essentially the same desire to refer. You're 
giving them a mnemonic device, leveraging their LinkedIn to make it easier for them to give you more names. Um, it also is um, systematic versus sort of the way many folks go for referrals, which is more catch as catch can. So you're really um, increasing the likelihood that they're going to give you referrals at all and then doing it in a systematic way that's efficient for them, but it's going to get you a lot more uh, referrals than you would if you just asked them. 100%. Um, could you talk about how this has impacted your business and, and, and just like some concrete numbers in terms of how you've been able to grow as a result? Uh, sure. So... Someone just asked to learn more about the Productive Power Program. Um, so I just included my Calendly link. If anybody on the call would like to learn more about Productive Power, feel free to schedule time with me uh, directly on my calendar. And just another way that you can leverage technology to really efficiently manage the processes in your business. So if you're not using Calendly, I strongly suggest it. Uh, Microsoft 365, if you're using that, does have... Um, something called bookings, which you can use as well, which is part of the suite of services. So in terms of how has this impacted my business, um, it's generally, it, it's virtually been responsible for our growth. So we haven't done much. You know, Dan was kind of the first thing we did to open our eyes to the, the power of social marketing and, and Facebook ads and that sort of thing. Um, but because we kind of stumbled upon this process with LinkedIn, we got so busy, we didn't even have time to, to leverage anything else to generate business. Because in our business, we pride ourselves on, on giving our customers a incredible experience. We kind of under promise and over deliver in terms of their experience with our service. And so we knew we had all these raving fans going around and that most people are not looking for what we do. Most people don't wake up one day and say, man, I wish I could find a, a, a technology consultant to help me work smarter, to help me leverage my technology in a more efficient way. And so we knew that if that wasn't the case, if people weren't going to Google and typing in technology consultant, then we needed to figure a way out or figure a way to communicate to the, the world what we do. And the best people to help us do that are people who think our program is amazing. And so it kind of, Created it, it kind of grew organically from something that was already happening, but we just, as your point, Dan, we used LinkedIn to kind of put it on steroids, and it it virtually has been responsible for our success. I mean, to the point where right now we have five full time coaches that provide um, training around digital tools, and we have a hundred time slots, and we only have ten left for the month of June. So we're booking out two and three months, and we need to hire another coach. Um, we're also hiring another salesperson because we know that we have proven processes in place. I mean, scale is all about having proven processes that you can hire additional people and know that they'll be successful. And so, you know, we know that this process works. So we know that we can hire a salesperson and if they leverage this process, it will help grow their book of business as well as, uh, their, their lead pipeline. And do you have a sense of the average person you enroll how many new customers result from them due to the Great. referrals? Great question. So I can tell you that a fourth of the people that go through our program identify themselves as raving fans, a fourth of the people. On average, a person will give us 30 names. Okay, so a fourth of the people that go through, so let's say, uh, let's make the easy math. 20 people go through our program. Five of them will say they're raving fans. Okay. And they'll give us 130 leads on average. I'm sorry, 150 leads. Five times 30, 150 leads. Of those 150 leads, 20% will take the meeting and half of which will sign up for our service. Okay, so let's do the quick math on that, right? 130, I'm sorry, 150, um, 20%, so 30 will take the meeting. 
And of the 30, 15 will end up becoming clients. Okay. So it's almost a, if you have, so in this can, scenario, you had 20 clients, 20 and clients, 15 new clients as a result. Right. So, so 20 generated 15 new clients, but here's the beauty. Every client generally sends two and a half people through our program. Right. So it's not a one-to-one. So we got 15 new clients, but on average, they sent us 30, let's call it 30 new people. So 20 became 30, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, that, that was sort of what I was wondering. So, so for every client you have, you have a half more. So every right. client is worth one and a half new clients. Yeah. And it's a, it's, this is a viral, right? This is a scaling right. strategy. And um, you know, every time you bring somebody in and you enroll them, it's not just their value to your business but the referral value to your business, which on average, it sounds like generates another one and a half clients. And so yeah. that's really why using this technique, you've really been able to grow. Can you talk just as we're wrapping up about the, the limitations? Um, you know, this is one marketing tactic, right? That really focuses, it's the best example of referral marketing I've ever seen, which is why I wanted to to share this with our, our community and, 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 and have you talk about just tactically how you do it. Um, but I know you're rounding out uh, your marketing um, and, you know, may still even be a work in progress, but uh, could you talk a little bit about, you know, the limitations of having single tactic? Um, it might not allow you to grow as fast as you want, for instance. Sure, sure. It's a great question. So uh, I can think of five letters that describe it. C-O-V-I-D. So when COVID hit, right, the last thing people wanted to do, <laughs> the last thing people wanted to do was help spread the word about productive power. They were worried about their own businesses. They were worried about, you know, whether they're going to catch the virus. And it felt really uncomfortable to ask them to spend some time helping us spread the word about productive, productive power for about two months there. And so we were really scrambling because we thought, oh, my God, our, our lead pipeline just basically went dry because we were, we were all in on this one particular tactic. And had we had a robust you know, Facebook strategy, we would have been able to find the people out there that are still looking for a service that are doing fine within COVID and, and so forth. And so on one hand, um, on one hand, it was we were pretty vulnerable to a shock and, and COVID was, was, you know, is the best shock or the, the biggest shock that I think any of us have seen in, in our lifetimes. Um, but the other thing that happened was because of the nature of, of how our system works, we were able to pivot within the referral process to people that were successful. So in other words, we didn't ask people to just introduce us to anyone who they knew. We asked people to introduce us to people they think would sign up for our service. And what that naturally had them think about is, who do I know that has a couple thousand dollars in discretionary money to spend on a training program? So what we found is the old industries that we used to target weren't really the ones like real estate. We used to have a lot of people in real estate that went somewhat dry and we started focusing more on healthcare. And people started referring us to their healthcare referrals and their people they know in healthcare, people that they knew in technology and things like that. And so naturally, this process helped uh, pivot us into different industries that were more resilient uh, economically from, uh, you know, the, what was going on with our economy. And conversely, we're coming out of COVID now. Are you seeing a greater willingness to, to, to do this from your raving fans? Oh yeah, I mean it's and and it within a couple months people had kind of gotten used to the new normal and they were ready to talk about productive power again. Um, but absolutely, I mean you know Shauna's one of her uh, major roles in productive power is to manage this whole process for me and my other sales executives. And so um, you know we just see this as you know a great way to to leverage our existing client base and. To your point, Grant, Dan, it's really 
allowed us to grow. I mean, it, this is primarily what we've done and we're generating over a million dollars in revenue. And so uh, for a training company, that's, that's pretty, uh, you know, pretty, I'm pretty proud of that statistic. Yeah, you should be. You know, uh, Paul Pietras asked, so this is less about generating actual new business in the sense of random people and more about getting referrals from already existing clients. 100%. Absolutely. Um, and one thing I want to bring up too, for those of you that are members of BNI, you know, I've, I've always, I've been a guest to BNI. I've never really joined because I haven't needed to because we had so many leads from our process. But whenever I am a guest to BNI and I meet one or two leads in what used to be about a three hour meeting now with online, it's now down to 90 minutes or so. Um, I'm always uh, struck by the fact that BNI, part of the process is to do one-on-ones. And during those meetings, the whole goal is to get maybe three referrals for each other that you can reach out to. And any person in BNI I ever talked to, I say, you know what, you guys really should be leveraging LinkedIn. You should be doing this process with each other and walking away with 30 leads, not three from the meeting. And so everyone I talk to about this says, oh my God, you're totally right. We need to be leveraging technology to make better use of our time when we do our one-on-one. So anyone who's in BNI, I strongly urge you to, you know, to really learn this process and to implement it so that you can make good use of your one-on-ones. A really good point. Um, I want to ask you just a business model question. Um, you know, so just to kind of make a, a teaching point, you know, when you're a marketer and you have um, a tactic like this, um, inevitably a COVID or COVID like thing is going to happen where that marketing tactic that maybe has been working for you for months or years might not work as well. And uh, what you heard with Brett. Uh, is that he pivoted by finding other industries and was able uh, to make it work, but he's also working uh, on other marketing channels to basically get sort of that pure stranger, not the referral, uh, interested in what he's doing. Uh, it's, that's a harder lift, um, but, uh, but definitely something he's working hard on because he does recognize, uh, based on our conversations, the risks associated with sort of any one tactic, whether it's a Facebook ad or, you know, speaking events or, you know, the raving fans referral process. You, as you grow, um, you want to make sure your company isn't over-reliant uh, on one tactic. Um, would love to hear you just kind of reflect on that, you know, as you're kind of masterminding the growth of your company from 1 million to 100 million, um, how, uh, how do you imagine kind of additional marketing tactics can help you get there? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, you know, I, I probably misrepresented the power of this process because I can't, I, I'm still doing um, business development for my company and I'm not comfortable hiring a salesperson until I can guarantee lead flow for that particular person. The problem is if I hire someone and all I have is the process I currently have in place, it's a chicken and the egg. How are they gonna get meetings with people, right? If they don't have a list of raving fans, well, they, don't, they can't get raving fans if they don't have a list of people to sell to. So one of the reasons that I'm still doing sales is because I haven't built up enough of a robust pipeline that I can hire another person and confidently know that they'll get X number of leads per week. And if they just close X percentage of those leads, they'll be able to make X amount of money because there isn't consistent statistical data that I have, you know, a on this process that I can guarantee that they're going to, you know, have the numbers that we talked about and B that I can provide a lead flow because this, while this is great and this provides a lot of leads, this isn't enough to keep a, a single person busy, a single full-time person busy, right? Because the nature of how many clients you have going through and what percentage will do this, probably all of you don't have enough clients that if this was your sole purpose would give you the lead flow that you would need to hire a salesperson. If you're gonna hire a salesperson, you better be sure that you have leads coming in so much that it will fill their pipeline. The one thing you don't wanna do is hire a salesperson and tell them they have to generate their own leads. You wanna be able to provide 
leads, the Glengarry leads that you know that they'll be at a close um, on a consistent basis. And that's where Dan's work comes in because you need to front load that pipeline with a bunch of people that may not know about your service yet that you can then close, become sales, and then you can do the referral after. One other really hard question before we wrap up, which is part of why this lead generating tactic is so important to your business is because you have a transactional business. You have a business where they transact with you, they get the training, and then they move on. And I was wondering if you have thought about trying to transition your business model potentially into more of a recurring business model that puts a little less emphasis on getting people in the top of the funnel and closing them? Yeah, great question. Um, so we, we're 100%. I mean, you know, anyone who's done evaluation on their business knows that if they have recurring revenue, they're in a whole different ballgame than a transactional business. So there are really three focuses we have to try to accomplish that. Now, we're not selling software, so that's got a natural subscription model built in. Um, but a couple ways that we're addressing that issue. Number one is people that have gone through our program can buy additional sessions. Probably 10% of the people that go through our program say, you know, this was so impactful or my needs are so great. I want to buy additional sessions and keep working with my coach. There are people that have been with us for two years, you know, going on three, you know, that probably will never stop. They just keep buying, you know, additional sessions. Um, they, they call it digital therapy in a way, um, working with a consultant. Um, so that's one way. The second way is that when we work with big companies, a lot of times they start sending all their new employees and this is, becomes part of their onboarding process. So imagine you get in with a client and you know 10%, they have 10% turnover. So 10% of their employees every year go through this as part of their onboarding program. And then we also developed a community forum. Uh, so the graduates of Productive Power, and this is very soon to roll out, will be able to belong to a community forum where they can interact with um, other Productive Power graduates. They can attend uh, workshops that we're giving on various topics. They can post questions and answers and get answers from the community as well as answer other people's questions. So it's just a great, pro a great place to further develop your digital productivity skills as well as network with other people who are, are like-minded uh, from a productivity standpoint. Good for you. Well, amazing things to come. Thank you so much, Brett. Uh, I can't thank you enough for, for your uh, presentation today. Um, you know, BizHack, um, one of the great accomplishments that we've had over the, the last seven years that we've been teaching digital marketing is what we call the lead building system. This is what we focus on uh, in our uh, accelerated program and in all of our training, the foundation, which is your business story, the six pillars, and then the nine step process for implementing them. And you can see the power uh, today uh, in Brett having a systematic process and then a step-by-step -step way of implementing it through a combination of uh, you know, human to human and technology. Uh, we have our next course uh, session coming up. It's a seven week program to train you on that. So if you know of anyone uh, who uh, might benefit from it, we would love to hear them. Uh, we're gonna be uh, wrapping up season three over the next couple of weeks. We're gonna be talking about Google ads and how to find new customers next week with the amazing Jeff Cooper of Saltbox. We're then going to be talking about Google Analytics, uh, an essential tool for any marketer. And then finally, we're going to be talking about three Fortune 500 marketing techniques that small businesses can use. I hope that the techniques that Jessica shares are half as useful uh, as the technique that you shared today, Brett. Thank you so much for that. Uh, to support BizHack Live, uh, please join uh, our Season Pass program. And we look forward to having you guys here again next week. Thanks again for joining us and for supporting BizHack and small business marketing. Really appreciate it. And thanks to you, Brett and Shauna, for a great session. My pleasure. Thank you, Dan.